All right, I've just arrived at the Bluebell. So this, I'm gonna stay the night here on my cool little trailhead bed, little comfy thing here. And then uh, 6.30 in the morning, we're getting our shuttle over to the trail. So, ah, it's real. It felt like it was never gonna get here. If you guys are like friends who are watching this and you've not followed the YouTube channel, I've tried this trail twice before. The second time I tried to do the trail is when I crapped out my ankle and ended up having surgery. So now the surgery's done, I'm recovered, and I'm not giving up. I'm gonna get this trail. So this trail is my nemesis, so that's one of the reasons I'm kind of really nervous about it, but we're gonna be okay. We're climbing a hill, and in the middle of climbing the hill, we realized, shit, <laughs> I never did a starting video. Anyway, we started. Now it's time for the rock montage. Hey, look at the rocks. This is the trail. We are at camp and we're almost done with the rocks. We have a little bit more tomorrow. And then once we hit Holston Valley Shelter, we're done. So, well, I mean with the rocks, not the trail. So today we ended up doing just a touch over 14 miles and we put down camp. And right as we got to camp, the sun came out after hiking in the rain all day. It's really, really nice. It's gonna help us dry our stuff out. That is um, little Missy's tent. And then this is my hammock setup. I got a tarp to protect me from the wind and any rain or dew. And this is a special hammock. It's intended for backpacking rather than like a banana in the middle of it. I lay diagonally, so it makes me lay flat. On that tree limb that's hanging over there, I've gone and hung my bear line. So when we do that, we hang our food from a tree at night so that critters and bears or anything else can't get to it and we hang it far away from camp so that anything trying to get to it isn't here doing it. But if you're hiking with somebody that you don't like, hang it right by their tent. Say good night, little missy. Good night. <laughs> This is a rock glacier. It's a really cool geological feature that isn't found a lot. And these rocks, there's several different theories about what causes it, but all of the theories took place in the Ice Age. But look at that view. I wish this could show it the way we see it. But unfortunately, it's hazy out. This mile marker 17, and it fell off the tree. <sighs> and I have to fix it because right now what we're hiking up is my adopted section of trail. I have about 1.8 miles of this trail that I maintain. <laughs> it is cold. Yeah, obviously you're in jackets and hats and gloves and our hands were so frozen for a little bit we couldn't feel our fingers. <laughs> So we were hiking along and we got our first trail magic, the amazing Nick Fowler. Hi. And he brought us M&M's M &Ms and gummy bears and this pepperoni was actually really good. It hit the spot. Yeah. I may not let him leave with it. Yeah. Okay, let's go walk. <laughs>
past the 27 mile marker. So we're moving along, that's 27 miles in two days. And then we are gonna be going down and seeing if we can find a campsite. All right, we're at camp for the night and we got this beautiful creek we're by here. This is Big Cedar Creek and it's just gorgeous here. Well, I'm starting to get a blister on my toe, so I've taped it up. We're at the Pashubi Trailhead, and this is on my last through hike where I had trashed my ankle and I was bailing on the through hike. So we're back to that point now. We're a little over 34 miles in, and everything's doing good. And now we're going to go climb that asshole Wilton Mountain. Come on, Wilton. We're coming for you. We are now hiking up Wilton Mountain, which I believe is the second highest mountain on this trail. Whew, I have not been looking forward to this one. And then right after we're done with this one, we'll go through the Kaimichi Valley, and then we'll climb up Rich Mountain, which is the second highest mountain in Arkansas. This kind of hike is like a dick. It's hard right now, but it won't be hard forever. I found this. It looks like a little starling with a pig face. And Melissa said that on this side looks like Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> and there goes Nick Fowler again, running down the trail. Like everywhere we go, there's that guy. <laughs> We're going through the Kaimichi Valley, and it's a wilderness area, which means when we do trail maintenance here, we can't use any kind of mechanical tool or anything with gears, so no chainsaws, no weed eaters. It all has to be done by hand. We've been hiking through here, and it's beautiful here, and legend says Bigfoot lives here. In this area have been a lot of Bigfoot sightings. Personally, I've never seen them yet. I'm laying here in my hammock, riding out a storm. I made it into Arkansas. Queen Wilhelmina Lodge. 5.3 miles left to go. Fifty miles! Yay! Alright, this is what a hiker hotel room looks like. <laughs> We're at Queen Wilhelmina State Park Lodge, and this is my sink load. Got my tarp laid out to dry because it rained last night. Oh, and I got clothes hanging off the vent <laughs> trying to dry. My hammock and my quilt, pants, umbrella, everything is just set out drying. And these are all my resupplies that I packed for myself. That's what the hiker mess looks like around here. Oh, and I got my shoes drying. Good morning. Okay, we left Queen Wilhelmina this morning by headlamp at 6 a.m. We went hiking in the dark just to get a head start because we're doing a 16 mile day or 16 and a half mile day today. So we'll talk it to you later. And in the meantime, I'll show you what I see.
this is how we do dinner. And we are at camp at Foreign Gap. And that's my little hammock over there, her tent, her dinner. What are you eating? Green chili mac and cheese. And then you put what in it? Tuna. So. And powdered sriracha. So she's got her little spicy thing going. I've got some chicken and dumplings, but they're white cheddar dumplings. And then we just rehydrate these meals. And um, we have little stoves that we use for getting our stuff heated up. Good morning. It's a cold morning. We got down to freezing last night. And we're still in the 30s this morning, but the sun is coming out and it feels lovely. So we've come to a little road trace here. And this is pretty cool. The reason I said this road is cool is because this was the first highway through this area. It was for wagons. And we're gonna follow this old wagon road up the way till we get back on the trail. But if you were to stay on this road, it would take you to Tannehill Spring. thought this was an interesting rock. If you've ever hiked with me, you know I gotta stop and look at every damn rock along the way. And then, ooh, a flower! It's amazing I ever get anywhere. Hi! I'm getting ready to go to bed. Today was a 14.5 mile day, which you're like, oh, it's gonna be a shorter day. Oh, it was long and a lot of terrain and a lot of climbing and like rocky terrain that was hard to get footing on. So, but we are now at camp and we did the 14.5 and this is what our camp looks like. And then we met another lady She's camped down there. That's her tent. Boop. And um, she's uh, really nice. And she's going to the same place we are tonight or tomorrow. So we'll see her again over there. But we'll, tomorrow is going to be our longest day of this trip. 18.5 miles long. And that's while also filming a YouTube video. So... <laughs> I definitely have my work cut out for me tomorrow. Okay. Good night. Good morning. Today is our longest day of this trip at over 18 miles. So I am getting an early start. The cool thing about hiking early in the morning and watching the sun come up is I get to hike towards this. How beautiful is that? So we pulled up to the trail here and there's a picnic bench and a friend is sitting here with apple fritters and kolaches and sodas. And I love them so much. <laughs> that beautiful morning sky. Good morning. Just finished my protein bar as I walk. That's my breakfast. But dude, check this out. I have been hiking into the sunrise. I sure hope the video is catching how vibrant these, per these uh, colors are. That is so beautiful. Well, I have just finished climbing Rock Row Mountain. 
And it's named this way because of a row of rocks at the top. So you see them over there. And then right over here. And it's a very defined row of rocks. So, and it kind of, like back that way over there, it almost looks like a rock path because it's so narrow. So this is why we call this Rock Row Mountain. Still walking along this rock row. It's quite long. It's really cool looking. Hey, non-backpacker friends. Uh, one of the questions y'all ask me a lot is how we get water out here. So this is it. I am at Harris Creek. Boop, right there. So what I did is I filled up what I call my dirty water bottle. And then we have these filters that we just screw onto the top and they screw onto any kind of typical thread like the smart water bottle. And I usually squeeze a little out just to get whatever old stuff was sitting in the filter out. And then, just like that, I squeeze this bottle and the water comes out all clean and filtered into this one. It's Jaws. This is a really cool cave structure. It kind of looks like Jaws coming up out of the water. The cave doesn't go but you know, five feet back, but make sure you get your picture taken with it because it's kind of one of those iconic things on this trail is to get your picture with Jaws. When you see a tree that looks like this and it's about to go, and do you have to walk right under it? You walk quickly. Whew, I lived. Well, I left at like 6 a.m. today and a little bit after 2.30 and I'm here at Story Creek Shelter where two beautiful ladies from Dallas who are hiker buddies are have backpacked in and are gonna camp with us, so I'm excited to see them. So that makes 15.5 miles, I think, today. And then tomorrow we have an easy, or it's not easy, we have a climb, but um, we have 5.1 miles out. And then we get a zero day, which means a whole day off with no miles hiked. So I'm kind of excited to get off trail for a little bit kind of feeling down today getting homesick so this is day five consistent on the trail without a shower or anything and my hair is so gross I could put it in a mohawk and it just stays <laughs> <Okay. laughs> well, we're back on trail we enjoyed our zero day and now it's time to start hiking again. Our next little stop with showers and resupply will be in three days. So we got two nights on the trail before we get to that. Then after that, we'll start headed to the finish. I'm gonna step off trail here for a second to show you guys something cool. This is an old Indian pointer tree. So you can see that this part of the trunk here was very thick. So what they would do is they would use straps when the tree was just a sapling to pull it down into this position. And then eventually the tree would just start to grow this way. And this one, it looked like the main core of the tree had actually gotten old and fallen off, but it would have grown up like that anyway but this one looks like it had another sprout come out the top of it and then it actually turned into a tree 
The reason they did this with these trees is because they would be pointing to different things. Sometimes it would be pointing to where they were camped. Other times it would be pointing to a good water source or a good area for hunting. But you'll see a lot of these where it kind of looks that way, but they're a younger tree. And what happens is when it's a little sapling, another tree falls, boom, and it pushes a sapling down. And then it grows into a style that looks similar to this, but it's a very young tree. This is an old one. So this would have been one of the, they call them the Indian pointer trees. And there's another name for it. And for the life of me, I can't think of it right now. So we're walking along and I was like, ooh, that stick looks like a snake. It is a snake. So they are harmless, but they will bite if they feel threatened. And you can see how he looks kind of kinky right now. So sometimes that happens because they're dehydrated. Other times they'll do that as a defensive mechanism so that they look more like a stick. And he definitely looked like a stick. So I'm sitting here on the side of the road waiting for our slack pack to show up. And then again, the same guy who just keeps showing up over and over again, Nick Fowler, he came and brought us frappuccinos, George, oh frappuccinos, and they are hitting the spot so much. Thank you, Nick. You're welcome. So what do you do when the trail has to go through barbed wire? Well, you build a little bridge over it. <laughs> Look at my pack. Look at my pack. You see it? It's barely even a pack. And look, she doesn't even have a pack. And then in like another half hour, that's going to be me. Because we have one pack with our water in it. And we're going to swap back and forth. But we get to hike 12 miles of our 17 mile, or almost 17 mile day without our packs because of the slack pack that Christy hooked us up with. So thank you, Christy, if you're watching this. We're loving it. Big Bear Shelter, which is one of my favorites. This is what the shelters look like. And it just sits in this beautiful area. And down over there, doop, doop, down in there, that's the creek. And it's just a really, really pretty area right here. This is my second favorite shelter. We got here in good time and it's still not quite dark yet and we're getting ready for dinner. Tomorrow we get off trail for the night. So we have 10 miles and then we get off trail. So, oh, and today we passed the 150 mile mark. So that was pretty cool. And then now we're looking forward to a shorter day tomorrow and then a bed and shower and clean clothes at a bed and breakfast that's just a little bit down the road. And the way we're getting there is the guy who owns it is coming to pick us up. Isn't this pretty? This is the Sugar Creek area. And this is Blue Blaze. This is actually the trail we are on. Just walking along this beautiful cascade of waterfalls. Just one after another going up this canyon. Anyway, I forgot to do an update yesterday. I was gonna do it when we got to mountain time. My husband had sent me some medications and they said, hey, your delivery's here. I was like, all right, cool. So I went out to go get my meds and it was my husband. He showed up to surprise me and stay the night with us. So 
it was good to see him. It was a little bit weepy when we were walking away from him. And he's like, well, I'm going to see you in four days. <laughs> I was like, I do. But I've been a little emotional the past few days anyway. So, but it was a great, it was a really great visit and a really neat surprise. How's my hair look? Does my hair look okay? <laughs> the look beautiful. on her face tells me it is not okay. Today we did further than planned, and that was with a late start on trail because we were coming from the bed and breakfast. Uh, so you know, today was pretty good. We kind of got some plans together about how we're going to stop more often and rest our feet, and it seemed to work out better. So we were actually getting to a time when we it would be time to rest again, but we're like, yeah, we're only half a mile from the campsite. Those of you who know me know that I'm into bugs and snakes and plants and stuff out here. We got a lot of these wild iris growing. And right here at our campsite, I just saw this. This is called a lady slipper. Isn't it cute? It looks like a little lady slipper. Yeah, I know how to feel really tiny. Come up here. It's just amazing. And you see that shadow right there? That's us. Look at this creepy face. Roar! Someone threw acid on me. We got more trail magic. Y'all remember <laughs> Corgi? She came and met us with some Subway and chips. And they were so good, they hit the spot. Okay, bye. Bye. Whoa! <laughs> it has a butthole. <laughs> and it looks like it's puckered up good. <laughs> We're stealth camping. This area is kind of weird. It has like different private properties that go through it, but it's like 30 miles of trails. So who's gonna hike 30 miles without camping? So anyway, we did 17.9, almost 18 miles today. And tomorrow we're gonna push for similar or maybe a 20, which is gonna put us very, very close to the state park and which is like five miles from the trailhead is a state park boundary and we really can't camp in there. Anyway, we are stealth camped and I am very stealthy with my camouflage stuff and Melissa is not so stealthy with her bright pink quilt on top of her thing and her purple bandana. Stealthy, not stealthy, stealthy, rainbow bright. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the sun's getting ready to go down, and we're going to grab some snacks to eat. It's going to be a good day tomorrow. I can just feel it. Bridge unsafe. Walk around. Yep, that looks pretty bad. This is Humpty Dumpty, by the way. I gave her a trail name because she had a great fall. <laughs> but luckily, we were able to put her together again. Yes. <laughs> Mile 204, a note here, a little bit after this marker, around like 204.4, there have been some reports of some aggressive dogs, three aggressive dogs that come out towards hikers. So we have a plan. We have brought a beef stick with us. So if we end up having that problem and the dogs do come out, we're going to try tearing off pieces of this beef stick and giving it to them. And like like throwing it away is from us. <laughs> so they go and run towards it while we get the heck out of there. Um, not every hiker sees them. Some hikers say they don't see them at all. Others report seeing them. Sometimes they only see two, sometimes three. 
But either way, we want you to be aware that it is a situation, but we're just gonna have to see what happens. And if they don't come out, then Humpty Dumpty and I get a beef stick. When we were crossing the road at Highway 10, we could see fire way at the other end of the lake. And as we kept getting closer, we saw like, man, I really smell smoke. I wonder where that's coming from. We found it. They did some kind of a burn here and it looks like a controlled burn because of how the line is very perfect. Yep. They burned the crap out of it. That looks weird walking on a road. It's one side burned and the other side beautiful. If you behave yourself, you go to heaven. If you're a dirt bag, you go to hell. <laughs> this is sad. This beautiful big tree right here is totally on fire at the core. And there's nobody here to see it and do something about it. Well, if we happen to see anybody, we'll maybe mention it because it's very sad. It's such a big, beautiful tree. Twelve miles left to go. Hello, this is my last update from the trail because tomorrow we finish. We did 20 miles today, so that leaves us with seven miles to go tomorrow. And then that's the end of the trailhead and the end of this hike. So this trail, if you guys don't know, has been my nemesis. Twice I have tried to do this. So now, ha, I'm so excited to say we've got it. Well, I don't want to totally jinx it, but we got it in seven miles. To celebrate our last Camp night, here is our camp at this. And we've just got this beautiful view of the lake. Well, we got a headlight start this morning. In a couple miles, our friend Marion will be meeting us to hike the remainder with us, which will be like four more miles. I'm excited to see her. I met her in Honduras on a dive trip. And then our shuttle driver, Tanya, asked if it'd be okay if she hikes down towards us and then finishes with us as well. So I think that's pretty cool. We're going to have an escort to the ending trailhead. So we are hiking across the bridge up ahead of Humpty Dumpty is Dive Buddy, who came out to see us. She's hiking to the very end with us. She lives here in the area, so it is cool to see her. Woohoo! Almost there. How many miles are we now? I haven't seen any mile markers. I'm not either. Um... Let's let it be a surprise. <laughs> that right there is Pinnacle Mountain. And Pinnacle Mountain State Park is where the trail ends. So we have less than a mile to the end. <laughs> and then, so you know we picked up Dive Buddy. And now we've picked up Tanya, who is going to be our shuttle back to the Bluebell where our cars are parked. And then, of course, Melissa is still hanging out with me. So, this is kind of a cool finish. To get to the parking area at Ta Talamina, <laughs> that's where we started. To get to the parking area at Pinnacle Mountain State Park, in the typical Washita Trail ways, you gotta go uphill. <laughs> Washita Trail thinks it's real funny, making us die one more time before <laughs> finishing. Okay, Washita Trail, we dead. <laughs> We're almost there. This is the sign that we're done. Woo! Yes, <laughs> it's done. 
Be I happy. am very happy now. <laughs> are your feet singing? Yes, they are. <laughs> Bye. Bye.